Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is a bit of an osteology video, um, a bit of a study of the bones, and we're going to look at what makes a long bone. So, if you haven't already seen it, um, I think in possibly the last Faria vlog, I cut this bone open. Um, I'll drop the link up above here if anyone hasn't seen it. But basically, I chopped it in half, and I thought it'd be a great way to show you what's actually inside a long bone. So. So this is a long bone, uh, basically it's longer than it is shorter, um, it has a diaphysis or a shaft, it has an epiphys at either end, um, and they tend to have growth plates around here and here. This is from a mature horse, and these growth plates have well and truly fused, um, um, so you can't really see them anymore. And the, re the growth plates are responsible for the endochondral growth, now endochondral meaning growth in bone in length. These normally tend to fuse, particularly in this bone, they tend to fuse around about at the age of two, two and a half. So um, yeah, so these are well and truly fused now. Um, so the only other type of growth of this bone would be intermembraneous growth. Uh, and when we look at the membranes that, uh, that are a part of a long bone, I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay, so a long bone, um, how we see it here, is not a true representation of how it would be in a live horse, it would have um, an outer skin called the periosteum, uh, and it'd also be highly vascular, so there'll be a lot of blood coming through this bone. It actually produces blood within the medullary cavity. So we just see it as this white sort of structure, but in reality, it would be very different. So, so this skin that I've mentioned is the periosteum. Now the periosteum um, encases the entire bone other than the areas of articulation, so the, 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 the distal condyles here uh, and this, the knee area up here. So everywhere else you would have this periosteum. Now the periosteum is a membrane that is made up of two layers, one layer being the outer fibrous layer. And this fibrous layer uh, protects the bone and also has these sharpie fibers that are built into it that actually really sort of penetrate inside the bone but then come out of the periosteum and attach to all the soft tissue around it, the tendons and the muscles. Um, so the inner layer of this periosteum is what's called the osteogenic layer. Osteogenesis genesis meaning the production of bone. So the osteogenic layer is where bone is laid down or bone is produced. And it's done so by a cell called an osteoblast. There's three types of cells you need to remember. The first one is an osteoblast. Now an osteoblast lays down your bone uh, or produces bone. So that's why you'd have an abundance on that inner osteogenic layer. So as you come further in, you come to these two different types of bone. We have our cortical bone, which is the more dense, harder bone. And we have our cancellous bone that you can see here and mainly here. Now the cancellous bone is a bit more of a honeycomb structured type of bone. It's very good at absorbing concussion. Um, the cortical bone is a much harder, denser structure and it's very good at supporting the actual horse's skeleton and the descending weight that's coming down here. So the actual, having these two types of bone make bone an unbelievably strong structure that's actually still able to absorb some concussion whilst doing its job of supporting the skeleton, supporting all those organs um, above it. Uh, so they're the two different types of bone. We'll go into a little bit more detail on those two types of bone in a few minutes. Um, I just want to talk about the other couple of structures here. This, this cavity that you see right in the middle here is the medullary cavity. Now the medullary cavity is, um, is an area where you'd find the bone marrow. Bone marrow, there's two types. There's yellow marrow and there's red marrow. Red marrow is um, the production of blood um, or the red blood cells. The yellow marrow, the yellow marrow is a, uh, a source of um, other things like fats uh, and other minerals that the bone would need or your body needs. Um, so in a younger horse, you tend to have a lot more red marrow, um, but then as that horse matures, that red marrow eventually sort of changes to a yellow marrow and becomes more of a fat source. Okay, so that's the medullary cavity. The medullary cavity is lined by a membrane, so similar to that to the periosteum, but this is just a single layer uh, membrane, and it has an abundance of the second cell that you need to remember, and that is an osteoclast. Now, an osteoclast is a cell that's very similar to a white blood cell, um, 
and we know that white blood cells are in our bodies and that they are sort of uh, fight infections and all them sort of things. So very similar to a white blood cell, it has multi-nuclei, so it's combined, so it's a lot of cells all combined together. And what it basically does, it releases an enzyme or an acid, uh, collagenase, and it breaks down collagen fibers. Now when we look at what makes up bone, it's actually, majority is collagen. So an osteoclast, which is on this uh, endosteum, actually reabsorbs or breaks it down, uh, breaks it down, removes it, and, and, and basically it's the sort of anti-osteoblast. So an osteoblast will lay it down, an osteoclast will reabsorb it and break it down. Uh, there's one more type of cell that, you, um, cell that you need to know, and that is an osteocyte. An osteocyte is basically an osteoblast, which has now done its job, it's laid its bone down, and it becomes encased by that bone that it's laid down be around it. Uh, and, it, and, it and it makes itself this little sort of pod called a lacunae, and it's basically, it forms part of the matrix that then is bone. So the bone, so the, the osteoblasts that are still on the membrane continue to produce bone. As that bone gets bigger, that osteoblast then becomes an osteocyte as it is surrounded by the bone that it's laid down. Uh, and then it doesn't die, it becomes a little bit more dormant. It's still alive, it's still connected to all the other cells through, through connectors called caniculi. So it's still alive, still tra transmitting signals all around this bone, uh, but it's no longer laying new bone. So that is an osteocyte. So yeah, so we have our periosteum, our cortical bone, our cancellous bone, our endosteum, our medullary cavity containing the bone marrow. So if we just talk a little bit more about the two different types of bone, um, the cortical bone being the compact type of bone, um, and what we've done is, I've made a few drawings here that I think you might find quite interesting. I can just bring you a little bit closer. Focus, here we go. Okay, so we've kind of taken a sort of section of bone out, and, and I've drawn it here in a bit of a pizza slice. Um, so this is a section through the cortical bone into the cancellous bone, this honeycomb structure here. And what I'm trying to highlight and what I'm trying to show is the cortical bone. And cortical bone's primary and anatomical unit is an ostion. Now, an ostion is the unit of bone. It's not the actual what, what makes up bone because it's made up of collagen, which is a protein. Um, but then um, we'll talk about it a little bit further on. It's that that combined together actually forms an osteum, which is the single unit uh, that makes up what is called a um, cortical bone. So an osteum is a single round sort of structure. You can see how um, cortical bone is made up of many of these, um, and it's made up in this sort of uh, cylindrical structure. If we just take this little snippet and just blow it up a little bit, we can see it here. What it is, is made up of a vascular bundle. Now a vascular bundle is a nerve, a vein, and an artery, all combined together, and it's uh, in this canal area, which is called the Haversian Canal. Um, so what encases the vascular bundle is the first lamella, or lamella. So the lamella is basically made up of, of um, collagen fibers, that the osteoblasts lay down, and they lay it down in a particular direction. So that would, so the first layer of um, collagen fibers is the first lamella. Uh, what happens then is another layer gets laid on top of that, but it's laid down in an opposite direction. And you can see by these blue lines how those opposite directions occur. So the second layer is then laid down opposite to the original layer, and then the third layer is then laid down again opposite to the second layer. And what this basically does, it produces these different alternating layers of lamella, which are very good at resisting any twist forces, and they actually what produces this hard cortical dense bone that we have as cortical bone. And you can see there's multiple osteans here, they've got their little vascular bundles inside. This is sort of going down into the bone, the Haversian canals, you can see it coming down here. Uh, and then what connects all these Haversian canals to each other are these canals here called the Volkmann canals and they come in from the outside from the periosteum and they bring in the blood and the other nutrients into the bone which then goes back into these Haversian canals and is transmitted up and down the bone. So that's cortical bone. 
cancellous bone, however, primary and anatomical fun um, unit also, and that is trabecular. Now, trabecular bone is basically bone that is in these uh, tube-like structures, these um, supporting rods. If you think of a building with its brick walls up the side, you've got these supporting rods all inside holding up the roof. Um, and that's what we see here. Um, and what it does, it creates a large surface area to mass ratio. And if we blow it up a little bit here, you can see how its actual makeup is very much similar. So you have the osteoblasts laying down these different layers of lamellae. And you can see how those osteoblasts that get trapped inside then become osteocytes. And they're connected to each other through these little black lines here called caniculi. Um, and you've got the osteoblasts along the outside, the much larger osteocyte with its multinuclei. So that's basically what's inside each one of these tubes. And it has an outer layer, this outer membrane of each one of these tubes, which is the endosteum. So similar to that of the medullary cavity, it doesn't just encase the medullary cavity, it also travels all the way around this cancellous bone or this trabecular bone um, and, it, and it forms that sort of outer membrane and again it's where we have our intermembranous growth so the bone is growing in width from very top to the very bottom not just where the medullary cavity is in the middle um, so you can see how the bone actually grows so that's the two types of bone you can see how this would be more um, susceptible to compressive forces as this area is able to flex more this area here is unable to flex and that's why it forms the much harder dense stronger structure that is cortical bone very good at supporting whereas this area here is very good at, at um, absorbing so we've got our support area and our absorbing area and they're the two types of bone form in a long bone and allow it to do its job as complete structure. Okay, so that's pretty much everything about a long bone. Um, I know I've tried to sum it all up in such a short little video. If you have any questions or if you want to know a little bit more about a long bone, then do drop me a comment. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on another video. Take care, guys.